Boom. Welcome to the third video in my white balance series. In this video, I'm going to go through the basic steps needed in order to correct minor white balance issues in your photos and videos. Plus, I'm going to show you why it's really important to try and get your white balance as accurate as possible in camera when you're shooting JPEGs or video and why it's not so important when you're shooting RAW. Now, if you missed the first two videos, I would suggest going to check those ones out as well. In the first video, I talk about what white balance is and then how to set custom white balance in your camera. And in the second video, I have a white balance battle to the death between a white card and gray. All right, so in order to properly correct your white balance in post, you should try and take a reference photo with one of these like white balance or color checker things in your photo first. Having these in your shot will give you a kind of neutral spot to be able to click on to properly kind of calibrate your colors to get them as accurate as possible, or at least give you a good starting point to start grading your photos and videos. But for a regular person like you or me that's just taking pictures of our families or making YouTube videos, getting the actual true colors doesn't really matter. And the truth is, most of the time, you're not even gonna have the opportunity to place one of these in your shot as a reference anyway. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to use these in your shot, but then I'm also gonna show you what to do under normal, regular, everyday circumstances when getting one of these in your shot is just not gonna happen. But before you go out and take any pictures, you obviously need to dial in your camera settings first. So your exposure settings, which is your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and obviously your white balance. Let's go. Okay, so if you have the opportunity under a controlled environment, then here's how you use one of these checkers. First, take a picture with your white balance card or the color checker in your photo as a reference. Then, simply take the rest of your pictures under the same lighting conditions. Once you're done taking all your pictures, you'll need to get them on your computer and then load them into an editing program like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. To correct the white balance in your images, first you need to click on your reference image and then from there, you're going to go over to these little sliders, which is edit. And you're going to stroll down here to where it says color. And you're going to use this color picker right here, the white balance selector. And you use it to click on something in the photo that should be a neutral color to automatically correct the temperature and tint. So the temperature and tint are right here. These are the values of the photo as taken in camera. So you're going to use this picker and I'm going to click on this one right here. And... To me, that's a little bit too warm. So that's where this temperature and tint, like the sliders come in, that this is just a starting point. So now we can go back over here and I'm gonna slide this back to cool it off a little bit. So I think that looks more like what I was seeing. Let's try this one over here. So any of these should be fine. They are all neutral. So I should be able to click on any of them. So I'm gonna click on this one. And to me, this one's a little bit cool. So I'm gonna slide this up a little bit. And I think that, looks pretty good right there. You can also fine tune the tint as well. When you have the look that you want, you can then apply that custom white balance to the rest of your photos that were taken at the same color temperature. To do that, simply go over here to these three dots and you're gonna go copy edit settings. Then you're gonna click on your first image of all the other ones that you took, hold shift and click on the last one. And you're gonna go back to the dots and just go paste edit settings. Now all of them should be corrected with the same white balance value that you selected from here. The only thing you'll notice is that it obviously doesn't correct your exposure. So if you need to fix that, you're gonna have to go over here and use these settings to fix what you need to, to get those images looking better or to match. So in theory, this is all well and good, but what about those times when you don't have the opportunity to get one of these in your shot? Well, that's why it's important to know that getting perfect colors should not be the hill that you die on. So what does this mean? Well, like I said in the last video, it's more about being consistent with how you set your white balance and sticking to it, even if it's slightly off. Now, if we follow the same principles, but just use the first photo that we took in a certain situation that doesn't have a reference color checker or anything in it, we can still click around on anything that we think is fairly neutral in that image to get that good starting point. Once you get something that you like, you can then adjust the temperature and tint and whatever other settings you want in order to get the look that you like. And then, just like before, copy that white balance profile 
to your other photos and boom, they will all match. Now let's jump over to Photoshop and I will show you how I do my corrections in there. So what I like to do is I like to right click on my image and convert to smart object first. Then I go up and go to filter and camera raw filter. I like to do it this way instead of just adding camera raw filter right on the image because then it's non-destructive. And you'll see what opens up looks exactly like what we saw in Lightroom. That's why I like to do it this way. So what happens here is we're going to go to the exact same thing. But in this case, there's another option that is just auto. And so you can try that and that looks okay, but maybe the tint, I think it's a little bit too green. So I might just slide that back and maybe warm it up just a touch in there. Or we can do it exactly the same way and go to as shot and use the picker and click on whatever we want to find a neutral spot to be able to click on and then maybe adjust from there. So I might go, you know, a little bit warmer there as well. And there you go. So when you're done, just click OK and you'll see that it adds a smart filter down here. So I can actually click this eyeball to go that was before and that is after. And what's good about making it a smart object is now I can go down here and I can double click on camera raw filter and I can go, go right back in and do even more editing if I want. What about video? Video. All right, now we're gonna use Premiere Pro to learn how to correct our videos. So the first difference starts with the color checker. So for photography, you could just leave the color checker in, take a picture and use it as a reference. But for video, you have to kind of do this with it first. You have to kind of tilt it forward and back and then left and right, just so you can find a spot that doesn't have like a crazy glare on it, like let's say right there. So I'm gonna go forward a bit and maybe like right at that spot. So you can use your scrubbing tool to find a good spot to be able to pick from. And then you're gonna go over to Lumetri Color right here. So if you don't see it, you can try and click on color up here or effects like I have it and it'll be a drop down menu or you can go to window and click on Lumetri Color. And if you notice in Lumetri Color, you'll see the exact same kind of white balance selector and temperature and tint that we had in Lightroom and in Adobe Camera Raw. So we're gonna do the same thing, click on our picker and I'm gonna click on this one right here and bingo, it fixes our image. Now, we can do the exact same thing. If you wanna slide this along and you know fix your temperature and tint, you can do all of that stuff. And then once you have the look that you want, you probably wanna transfer it to your other clips. So you can see this one's off by a bit, this one's off by a bit, but if you notice, they're off by the same bit. So the white balance was the same bad on all of these as it was on this one originally. But if you have one that is separate bad white balance, like this one is different than this one, then you can't copy the correction that you did here onto this clip. We can only copy it onto these three right here. So to do that, you have to click on your original clip and you're gonna go into effect controls over here. If you don't see it, try and click on these arrows and it'll be right there, effect controls. And then you're gonna go down, and you're gonna scroll down to find Lumetri Color and you're gonna click on it so it's highlighted. You're gonna go edit, copy or control C and you're gonna highlight all the clips that you want to apply that same correction to, and you're just gonna go edit, paste, or control V. And you can see that it now corrects that one, corrects this one, and corrects this one. And if we go into those ones, you can now see that Lumetri Color was added into those ones, and if you click on it, it'll be the same like values and stuff over here that we originally got from this one. So if we try and apply that to this one, so if we go and edit and try and paste on that one, you can see that it's not gonna correct it in the same way because it's not moving from the same kind of color temperature value as it was from this other one. So we can still go in, you can still try and like match it. So I'm gonna move this, move this in and you can see that that's kind of like that. But your best bet is to make sure that your white balance is consistent throughout all of your shots. Even if it's off a little bit, it's better to be off the same little bit on all of them than it is to maybe try and correct one and then match them later. But the big question once again is, what do you do if you don't have a color checker or something in your image as a reference? Like normally people wouldn't. Well, let's use this as our example again. I'm gonna try the white balance selector. I'm gonna click on maybe this white little blotch here. That doesn't look good. Maybe I'm gonna try this little like gray dot there. So that's maybe closer so I can use that as a starting point. I'm just gonna peel it back a bit because it's maybe too, the temperature's too warm and maybe even peel this back just a little bit, you know, maybe 
kind of fix it that way. So you can eyeball it. That's one way to do it. Or if you want to be more advanced, there is Lumetri scopes that you can learn how to use. That'll make it much more exact, but that's a whole separate tutorial. And on top of all of that, what I showed you with this is just the basic one-click method. There's also calibration tools that you can download that come with these that you can kind of mask out the zone that you want of the card, which allows you to apply an actual like true calibration for the colors in your image. But again, that's not this video. The final thing that we're gonna go over in this video is just why it's so important to make sure that your white balance is as accurate as possible in camera when you're shooting JPEG or video, but why it's not so important if you shoot raw. Pointing again. Let's start with video this time, and we're gonna look at a clip that is obviously way off in terms of white balance, like this is atrocious. So to fix that, we're gonna try the exact same thing that we tried last time. So we're gonna use the color picker. I'm gonna try and click over here and yikes. You can see that the temperature is cranked all the way because that was like a very orangey, you know, scene like this, it looked like this. So the color picker was like, well, it's way orange. So we gotta compensate with blue, but it couldn't go any further than that. And then it's looking like, well, wait a minute, there's a bunch of green junk in there too. So we're gonna try and go this way, but if we try and go this way, it's bad. Try and go this way, it's bad. So there's nothing you can do. If you have an, a video clip that you film that's way off in terms of white balance, there's really nothing you can do at all besides make it black and white. Now let's go over to Photoshop and we'll try and correct this really blue JPEG image. So I've already converted it to a smart object. So let's just go up and add camera raw filter to it. And we're gonna try the exact same thing that we've been trying this whole time. Uh, I'm gonna switch this one to auto first to see what we get. And you can see that since the original one was very blue, it's trying to compensate by adding yellow. And in terms of the tint, there's really nowhere to go. If we go this way to try and fix, it's really bad green everywhere. And if we go anything this way, it looks really purpley. So again, this image is just kind of a waste and you can't really do anything about it except for maybe making it black and white again. But if we're talking raw images or raw video, that's a whole different story, which I'll show you quickly by opening up this image that I have. That's my one raw image that I took. And I'll open that one up right into Adobe Camera Raw and we can see the exact same thing. This time it's not a filter, it's right in Adobe Camera Raw, but it's the exact same setup. But this time when we go into white balance, you can see that we can actually select right from here and boom, it fixes it. Even though that image, like look, it's way off and we can just go boom, auto, fixed. Or we can go, I know it was shot in tungsten, boom, tungsten, fixed. But we can also go here and use the color picker and look how nice this is this time, boom. And it just fixes it, no problem. So when you're taking pictures in RAW, so it's a CR2 file on your camera, it is much easier to fix and safer. You don't even have to worry about the white balance really at all. You can just do whatever you want and it'll be fine. So what does all of this really tell us? Well, it's basically this, that if you're shooting JPEG or video that's not raw, then you need to make sure that you dial in your white balance in camera to be as accurate as possible, which makes correcting it afterwards easy or just take your pictures in raw and you don't have to worry about anything. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.